Hi, I've had a request to show uh, how I set up my sewing machine for doing some ruler work. Now obviously I only work with Westerly rulers, but the technique of setting up your sewing machine is, I would think, the same for any brand of ruler work. So I'm going to show you how I do this on my Janome. So just bear with me while I lower the camera and turn around. Now, on this, this is my Janome Memorycraft 6700P and it's probably got similar features to, uh, I'm just going to turn the light off because I think that might make that a bit easier to see. No, it's the light on there. Right, that doesn't make any difference. Okay, so the first thing to remember is doing ruler work, we are working um, in free motion mode. So on my machine at the moment, the feed dogs are still up. I've taken the, all the feet off, so all that's exposed at the moment is the shank that you'll see there. Now on this machine, it's really easy to lower the feed dogs and I just reach behind and there is a very convenient little lever and I just slide it there and the feed dogs have dropped. On some machines, it's in another corner and you press that and the feed dogs will go down. Have a look in your manual, it'll tell you how to do that somewhere. Now, I have got a quilting extension table. Noisy sheet off. So I've got my quilting extension table in place. So that just gives me an extra layer of... Uh, I'll just try and turn this around a bit more so you can see that. Um, gives me more space to keep my rulers flat. Now, as I said, I've left everything off the shank. So at the moment, it's just the bare shank. Now, this is my westerly foot. This model is a high shank machine. So it has a longer space here. Uh, if you're not sure whether you want high or low, um, check with the suppliers where you're buying your foot. Obviously, westerly feet. Uh, the stockists will know whether from the model of your machine whether you want high, medium or low and there are a couple of special feet or adapters for things like Beninas. So what I do is I've put the retaining screw through the space here so you can see that goes through and place that screw into the hole on the shank. And Finger tighten it just to hold it in place. Now, if it's in the correct place, the needle will sit exactly in the middle of the diameter of the bottom of the foot. So the needle, if it's to the side, then your needle is not in line. Uh, you might need to adjust the needle position because it needs to sit in the centre. Now, I'd say we're working in free motion. So we want to take away as much friction as possible. So for that, I use one of these So Steady uh, grid gliders. But there's lots of similar ideas. And it's you want something that is either silicone or plastic so that whatever fabric you've got on here will move around easier. You don't want it grip because it's tricky enough trying to remember what you're doing. So... The foot is in place, it's finger tight, and I've threaded up the machine completely as I would normally do. I tend to use glide thread for my ruler work, uh, but that's just my preference. So I put glide top and bottom. Um, at the moment I've got an orofill, but I'm just showing you how I would do it. Now, to set the last part of the setting up is the position of the foot. Now, this little sampler is just plain fabric. If I was going to be quilting on some pieced fabric, then I will adjust the foot accordingly. Now, what I would do then is lower the press of foot down. Turn this light off because it interferes with the, that's better. So I've lowered the press of foot down. Obviously you would keep your machine switched on. This is purely just the filming. And what I want to be able to do is move the fabric freely with the bottom of the presser foot just kissing the fabric. So if I lower the foot, because you've got that big slide, 
if I drop the foot down, it's now sitting into the fabric and it won't move. You can see that. So the foot is really just there to give you the guide for the templates. So I've raised it up and it's moving freely around, no problem. If it's too high, then you can have some issues with that. But obviously on this, it's just plain fabric. So there's, there's no uh, changes in depth. If it was on pieced fabric, then I would set the foot slightly higher. And once I've quilted and sewn along that area a bit, it might then uh, settle down and I will lower the foot slightly. So keep your screwdriver nearby. Don't lock it back away in its toolbox. Mine's always sitting just underneath so that I can bring it up. Now, before you start anything, you will have prepared what's going on in here and you'll thread it all up. Now, to do your tension test, what you would do is hold, hold the top thread. So I'm left-handed, so I usually do hold it in my left hand, but I've switched over just for this. And then I will rotate i'm doing this manually because obviously the machine is switched off do one rotation or needle up needle down lift the presser foot to open the tension discs and pull so that we can get our bobbin thread up on the top so i'll just do that again i think the bobbin thread might be a bit short if it doesn't come straight away keep turning until it's released so I've now got bobbin and top thread both on the top and then you can start your stitching so hope that helps <laughs>